very good evening to you with a Wednesday, June 20th edition of the CBC Evening News. I'm Ryan Broom. In our top story, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley has taken steps to repair the fractured relationship between, the Barb between Barbados and the Inter-American Development Bank. The country has had five loans cancelled from the IDB between 2016 and 2017, and the Prime Minister is adamant that that must be a thing of the past. During a courtesy call from IDB President Luis Alberto Moreno today at government headquarters on Bay Street, Prime Minister Motley said the island's disbursement rate is among the lowest in the hemisphere at just 13%. Barbados has a loan portfolio with the IDB of 191 million US dollars, of which 135.7 million dollars remains undisbursed. Ms. Motley says as a result, there are three major loans that need to be addressed immediately. I refer to a loan to strengthen human and social development um, in Barbados. That is nine-tenths, 90 percent of that remains undisbursed. And that loan was signed since September 2015. The road rehabilitation program, which is 25 million U.S. dollars, um, and 24.7 million U.S. dollars remains undisbursed. In other words, we spent 300,000 U.S. dollars, even though that loan was signed in November 2015. And I'm sure Barbadians would be surprised, given the state of our roads today. And the smart energy program, um, we literally have the deployment of cleaner fuels program, sorry, and renewable energies in Barbados, which is 34 million US and 32.2 million US remains available and not dispersed, even though that loan was signed almost two years ago. And President Moreno says, having interacted with Prime Minister Motley for 13 years, he personally knows her commitment to Barbados. He said the decisive action she has taken since taking up the reins of government shows her willingness to bite the bullet for a greater good. When I saw that, it was my immediate reaction to get on the phone and to say we're here to help because when leaders take those kinds of decisions and when they decide to confront the issues of a country, they deserve all the help and all the friends. So that is the fundamental reason I'm here. Uh, it will be many trips, it will be many times, not only from me, but certainly from many of my colleagues, as we embark on this new uh, uh, day that uh, uh, Prime Minister Motley is trying to bring to all of the people uh, of Barbados. And yet another major step was taken today towards permanently addressing the problems that have affected the south coast of the island. The new administration's promise to get the South Coast sewage situation under control has entered a new phase, with excavation starting here at the Graham Hall Nature Sanctuary. And they're hoping that the work can be completed the next few weeks. A team of officials led by Minister of Energy and Water Resources, Wilfred Abrams, Minister of Environment and National Beautification, Trevor Prescott, and General Manager of the Barbados Water Authority, Keith Roy Halliday, all converged at the entrance of the Graham Hall Nature Sanctuary for the start of the excavation phase. It's believed to be one of the key areas where work crews will be able to identify blockages in the system, helping to hopefully once again return regular flow patterns to the sewage system. Mr. Halliday says it will involve excavation to about 15 feet to gain access to one of the mains near the manhole. He says they're hoping for completion within four to eight weeks, while also being mindful of the impact of any potential rainfall during that period. We have to obviously proceed with caution. We do not want to undermine the manhole. Safety is paramount. We know that when you start going into the manholes because of the, the, some of the gas that comes off of the sewage, you may get some H2S, which could overwhelm our workers as well. So we work with an abundance of caution and safety. We'll be using gas monitors and we'll be working with full respirators. So we are happy that we are at this point, but we still recognize significantly so that this is but the start of another long process or hopefully short process in actually repairing or attempting or fixing the sewer lines as it were. 
Meanwhile, Water Resources Minister Wilfred Abrams is promising that they will be trying to keep disruption to a minimum for officials and visitors to the nature sanctuary, pedestrians and motorists using Highway 7 on a daily basis, as well as businesses in the immediate area. When we manage to excavate here, we're going to send the cameras down to properly identify what is the, the cause in front of the, the old Scotiabank building. Um, after we manage to see that from inside properly for the first time, then we will know exactly what we have to deal with when we get there. We're in position to put everything in place to do it as quickly as possible. But so right here, this excavation solves two purposes. It allows us to fix the coupling at this site, and it also allows us to complete our investigations in a way we have not been able to before to see exactly the nature and extent of the breach in front of the Scotia Bank building. And Environment Minister Trevor Prescott adds there will be another major effort at the sanctuary itself, running simultaneously with the excavation phase. The work that we have to do here would depend very much on at what stage we've been able to resolve the problems with the sewage plant. Um, the, one of the issues that we have here is that as a result of the sewage over the last few years or months that we've been experiencing this, um, it has affected the, the, the ecosystem in here. So we have a, a lot of the fish died, um, the turtles died. We have a, a major settlement of solid sewage um, at one point in the, in the swamp. And what we have to do now is to work um, simultaneously with what is happening here in order to start to remove all of that out of the swamp. And Minister Abrams has said that the ministry will be issuing daily media releases or as needed to keep the public constantly informed should there be any new changes to traffic flows diversions or disruptions in the area. So consistent with its manifesto promises, government is working swiftly to address the plight of residents in White Hills, St. Andrew. However, there are a number of key details still to be ironed out. During a tour of the parish by key officials, it was revealed all will be done to keep residents in place while undertaking the much needed repairs around them. Our Kareem Smith has that story. There is light at the end of the tunnel for residents here at White Hill in St. Andrew. For years, they've been forced to put up with crumbling infrastructure, but members of the new administration say that the rebuilding of roads will be a priority and not the removal of men and women from their homes. A large contingent led by Minister of Transport and Works, William Duguid, along with the parliamentary representative and Minister of Housing, George Payne, spent well over three hours surveying the crumbling infrastructure in the area. Minister Payne spoke in defiance of independent studies carried out under the last government, suggesting that roads be abandoned and the entire community relocated. Although he doesn't know the cost or the length of time it will take, he's confident that repairing the road will be the wiser choice. There are a few houses um, near the, um, very near the road that must be, must be, uh, as a matter of, of urgency, must be relocated, but you're, you're probably talking about 10, 10 houses or so. But you have about over 50 houses in the, in the White Hill area. You have some solid stro stone structures, um, uh, you know, and it, it is extremely um, costly. It is more costly um, to relocate than to fix the, the road in White Hill. Over the years, the community has had to contend with landslides, water shortages, and the complete collapse of a major road abandoned since 2014. We'll be getting on that as a matter of urgency. In addition, we are setting up a subcommittee headed by Minister Peter Phillips, together with Soil Conservation and the Ministry of Public Works, to be able to give us some options and costing of what it would be for White Hill and also the subsidiary, all of these other roads. But clearly, uh, there's been significant neglect in this constituency for a long time. And now we have to put those wrong things right and get things back in order in this constituency. The tour moved on to Springville, Dark Hole, Coggins, which leads to Chalky Mount and King Street, St. Simons. They are promising that St. Andrew's fragile communities will no longer be neglected and that maintenance will be key to resolving the district's long-standing woes. Kareem Smith, CBC News. Thanks, Kareem. We're keeping the regional integration flame alive. That story and more coming up after the break. Welcome back. Well, deepening integration was among the wide range of areas discussed by Barbados and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Authority 
at the grouping's just concluded 65th meeting. This was revealed by the new OECS chairman and prime minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, during a press conference last evening. Prime Minister Mia, Mia Amor Motley was invited to the meeting as a special guest of the authority. Several other matters were put on the table for discussion, which Dr. De Go Dr. Gonzalez called practical matters of cooperation. A special meeting will also be convened between the heads of OECS governments and Barbados on regional airline, LIAT. With the aim of understanding better where we are, LIAT, you know, there is a an analysis which is ongoing. There are consultants on the project, and we'll have the consultants there, and the Caribbean Development Bank, which is very much involved in this exercise, and the management of LIAT. And we are hoping that out of that discussion would emerge a new shareholders agreement, hopefully, with other members of the OECS. Some sad news now, former president of the Senate of Barbados, Sir Fred Winland Gollop, is dead. Sir Fred, who was a director of the Central Bank of Barbados for 10 years and was president of the Senate from 1994 to 2008, passed away early this morning. He was also the chairman of the Nation Group of Companies for over three decades and one of the founders of the Nation newspaper in the early 1970s. Sir Fred was a member of the Disciplinary Committee of the Barbados Bar Association and served as a commissioner on the Judicial and Legal Services Commission of the Caribbean Court of Justice. The former Queen's Counsel was made a Knight of St. Andrew in 1997. One of his contemporaries, Queen's Counsel Sir Henry Ford, has been reacting to his passing. Sir Fred's passing is a grievous loss, particularly to his family, but also to many of his colleagues, friends, and to the country as a whole. As you know, he was an outstanding lawyer. He was an outstanding journalist as well, and also a person who participated in political life as president of our Senate. As a friend, he was warm and always available to give advice helpful advice. His passing would have been, as I said before, a deep loss to his family. But those of us who knew him well also feel it very personally. Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. Welcome back. With well, the Guyana Road Safety Council wants stakeholders not to let their guard down because the number of accidents and fatalities has declined. Javon Vickery reports. 50 deaths occurred on the country's roadways so far this year, compared with 48 for the corresponding period last year. In June 2016, the death toll stood at 66. Coordinator of the Ghana Road Safety Council, Ramona Durgin, believes that once accidents decrease, stakeholders become relaxed. She stated that the work of stakeholders must continue, regardless of the decrease in accidents and fatalities. We have gotten to the stage where we have seen that the people are not um, really... Um, like whenever you see there's a decrease in, in road, road crashes, we find everybody relaxes. And they said, okay... Uh, we're comfortable, so the enforcers relax their enforcement, the Road Safety Council go into the, the um, little training and whatever. But um, whenever we see a decrease, we should not relax our enforcement. Dorjan further noted that even though efforts by stakeholders did not have a favorable impact on the adherence to the rules of the road, the number of occurrences has decreased. She stated that with a host of initiatives, the Road Safety Council has ascertained that the focus area should have been on drivers attached to organizations. So now that we have targeted the children and we continue to hype and try to help the road safety education more in the schools, we need to focus now on, the, on your workplace, on the ministries, and let them know how important road safety is. For, for, to be uh, to have like fleet management training and, and defensive driving training in the workplace of itself. 
Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. Sports package is coming up next, but first, here's a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. If your asthma medication is not working, you should go immediately to the Asthma Bay at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital or visit one of the polyclinics in your area. This tip is brought to you in association with the Asthma Association of Barbados.